Washington, and uh, you trailered this one in. I, you normally fly them, but I guess electric power still wouldn't get you to early. Well, yeah, it's it's uh, it's one of those things where I, I feel that uh, electric power is going to really be the uh, the thing of the future, and and anything we can do to help help it uh, uh, obtain the rightful status that it has that it needs to have. Uh, such as uh, driving to the show, I'd much rather fly. I, I really enjoy flying to the show. It's a fun experience, and and it's easier, it's cheaper, and I do like saving money. But uh, but the electric plane uh, needs to be here, and and people need to be able to see it. it it's 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 in development. Um, this motor here that we're uh, running this year is a uh, a Mars motor. And it's a DC motor. That's the third uh, third type of motor that we've installed on the airplane to, to try out. Let's give you a little history on that. Then. What was the first one that you tried? First one that we tried was a PMG 132 uh, uh, permanent magnet motor, and it's made by a company in Germany. And, and what kind of results did you have with it? Uh, the results, uh, the performance was okay. Uh, not anything super fantastic, but it was okay. The uh, main problems that we had was that uh, in order to get that performance, we were putting too much, pulling too much out of the motor, and uh, so we had issues with uh, various components that weren't uh, run up to the job that we were trying to land it. So uh, uh, the last, the number two motor was was one that we built ourselves that Thomas Sinkel designed for us. And it's a really excellent motor. I'm really happy with it, but but we have to be able to uh, supply it at a good price. And in order to do that, we'd have to build it or have somebody build it. And at the present time, we haven't uh, got that part worked out. So I'm looking at other motors that are uh, would be cost effective for the little guy, people like me that don't have a lot of money. Uh, we want to put uh, a motor on that'll do the job and. Uh, not cost very much money, and this little motor here only costs about five hundred dollars. But it doesn't look little. I mean, well, compared I'm to the it, one that you had at Oshkosh, it was like six inches wide and round. With this, that's true. This is big. Well, let's talk about little and big. Uh, the the motor that we have here is is basically it's a ten kilowatt motor, and the motor that I was flying at Oshkosh is a twenty kilowatt motor. And a kilowatt, uh, 10 kilowatt motor is approximately 13.4 horsepower to give uh, a relative view of it, its, its output. So this is about half the horsepower that you were flying? About half, yeah. And, and to be honest, uh, we had not reached a state of development uh, at Oshkosh with the other motor that I was running at its full potential. We were only running it at uh, 16 kilowatt output. So just a little bit more than this, really? Yeah. Yeah, so this, this one does fly all right. Um, it, uh, it's inexpensive and it's heavy. Uh, it weighs 34 pounds as compared to the, the Eagle motor uh, that we were flying at Oshkosh, weighs only 16. And then there's the controller. These are very, fairly inexpensive controllers because it's a DC motor. Uh, so that helps keep the cost down too. So it, as far as system cost goes, we're looking at at uh, you know maybe six or seven thousand dollars for the batteries and the motors and everything motor. And I see that you're using reduction drive in this one rather than uh, going direct drive when you run. Right. Motors. Yeah. The the reduction drive is related to the fact that that any motor, gas engine, or whatever is designed to run at a certain RPM, and the uh, the propeller needs a certain RPM. And if those two happen to match, you're good to go like with the Eagle motor was designed to run at the right RPM for this propeller, uh, you know, at 1800 RPMs. So um, what we're having to do here is that this motor happens to be designed for other purposes and its uh, design RPM is up around uh, 3500 RPMs. So you're running what, a 2 to 1 reduction? Yeah, 2.4 to 1 reduction, which gives us uh, uh, a more appropriate propeller speed and uh, allows us to use the nice big propeller. Because yeah, you're using a, what, a three blade? What's it look like? With... Yeah, yeah, it's a 68 inch diameter three blade propeller. 
It's the same kind of propeller that we'd be running on the airplane with the, uh, the gas engines, like the HKS engine, for instance. And what kind of performance are we getting out of it, say, compared to uh, what you would normally have in a, a single cylinder engine on this? In well, a yeah, to, to uh, uh, compare apples for apples, uh, if we had a, a 13.4 horsepower two stroke engine on here, we would get the same climb and, and cruise performance. Except that uh, because this is such a small little package here, we can put a nice clean little cowling over here. And with the clean cowling, it allows it to go faster, which is not an asset for an ultralight because an ultralight is limited to 63 miles per hour. So going fast is not going to buy you anything. Uh, one nice thing about the electric power, though, is that you can uh, program the controller to limit the RPM of your motor. And the RPM of the motor limits your top speed so that you can get full power for your takeoff and climb. And then when it comes to cruising, well, you can cruise at the 63 mile an hour limit, at a partial power setting, and uh, everything will work uh, uh, just fine and be legal that way. Now, the other <laughs> component that we acquire is batteries. How are the, the batteries coming along to supply the power to this motor? Well, the batteries have been improving. I bought these set of batteries four years ago, and I paid about uh, $7,000 or so for them. And, uh, the last set of batteries that I bought, which uh, will do the same job as these, is, is a little bit better uh, quality, uh, probably about 4 or 5%, and it's a lot cheaper at around $2,000. So it's come down a lot in price. And how long do you think it's going to be before you're actually, or are you offering these packages now? Well, basically we're... we're we're offering the airplane, you know, as, as, a, as a kit without the engine instruments and propeller. Uh, but as far as the, the package goes, that's kind of a, an individual preference thing. Um, how, how much do you want to spend on it? Uh, how, how much, you know, performance do you want out of it? Uh, it so it's not something that we really have a, here's a box, here's what you get kind of thing. It's more a matter of we're, we're researching all the different opportunities and uh, put them together into usable packages you know and later on we'll have that here's your box for so many dollars kind of thing and do we have a later on as far as time, time? <laughs> probably six months to a year oh so we're not that far off not yeah. far off yeah so if somebody want to get a hold of you get a little more information on the package or on the aircraft where would they go well uh we have, uh, I have an email address, which is thundergull.com. That's T-H-U-N-D-E-R-G-U-L, with just one L, uh, dot com. And you can get a hold of me by email that way. And you can also look at their website, which is thundergull, with two L's this time, uh, with, a, you know, www.thundergull.com. Uh, and where are you physically located? Okay. Um, we're in uh, near uh, Santa Margarita, California. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.